Sunshine, a common commodity in Phoenix. It's sunny here about 290 days of the year, and that fact has earned us the nickname the Valley of the Sun. All that sunshine can create some high temperatures, though. It's not uncommon to top 110 degrees in the summertime. That extreme heat can make things very uncomfortable in Phoenix. Just getting around town can be a struggle when it's really hot outside. Extreme heat is not just a Phoenix problem. Many other cities experience high temperatures as well. But Phoenix is looking to be a city in the forefront of implementing strategies to deal with the problem. Urban heat is a, a, a problem of the 21st century for probably 40% of the global population. And we are in a position to uh, set the tone for that. And I think um, we do it for ourselves, but we also can do it uh, uh, for the rest of the world. The city of Phoenix recently invited in research teams from Arizona State University to present their findings and look at the effects of extreme heat on our city and ways to work together to maximize comfort and cooling. So much of what we've been doing from a coding standpoint or a zoning standpoint is trying to enhance the thermal comfort on the street through shade and then the placement of buildings. But based on the previous presentation, that may be having an adverse effect on the overall temperature. So although researchers want to look for solutions, they also have to work together and make sure there are no unintended adverse consequences. It starts with identifying the sources of our heat. It starts with shortwave radiation from the sun. That's the key driver of, of the uh, urban energy balance. But there's also a source of energy that's input by our own activities, waste heat from buildings, uh, industry, and vehicles. So how this energy that enters the environment and, uh, is sort of moved around um, in, in the city depends on a number of factors related to urban form and materials. So there's convection, there's long wave uh, radiation emission from surfaces, there's thermal storage as a function of the material density and, and the heat capacity of the materials in the city, and then there's evaporation that takes some of the, the heat that's in the city and moves it into evaporative cooling. And these are just a few of the things researchers are looking at. Others include the shape of our homes and how the landscape around them is arranged. Parking is a big factor. Can we change on-street parking and possibly modify parking structures by applying shading or other things to keep heat down? Another consideration is our pavement. What pavement types and design characteristics can make a difference in heat and the retention of heat. Also, looking at how we can use the arrangement and density of buildings to improve things like shading and make a more comfortable urban climate. The focus on all this research is the comfort of our residents. But we need to go beyond just uh, shade trees. I think we need to start talking about a city of a future where we want people to be able to walk in the summer. I mean, it. Our sidewalks are not cooled zones. We, need, we want people to assemble for meetings, for music, for outdoor uh, farmers markets. Uh, we need to make cool areas in the city where people can be cool areas to approach bus stops and to be at them or our, all our energy at rapid transit won't work. Transit is a very important factor. There are already some improvements being made to our bus stops. These new shade structures are designed to block the sun from several different angles and can be rearranged depending on the need. Researchers are also centering around those parts of our population that are vulnerable to the extreme heat, the elderly and the homeless. We have to plan for heat disasters where power is gone and air conditioning is lost. Part of this is spreading out the geographic locations of cooling centers, those places where people can go to get relief from the heat. I'm very supportive of all the strategies we've discussed related to heat mitigation, but if we're not thinking about the number of, of beds available in homeless shelters, if we're not thinking about our energy assistance programs, we might be missing a really important part of the story in understanding how these adverse uh, events come to be. This Cooler Phoenix Research Symposium presented some valuable findings, but most of it is in the early stages of development. 
What's good is that the City of Phoenix and ASU have pledged to work together as opportunities present themselves in the future. This is just not, you know, some exercise that ASU wants to do because we want to engage with the community more. This is a fairly critical issue for the region. The City of Phoenix and Arizona State University are committed to work together but both organizations understand that broad public support is needed as well in order to make positive changes to reduce the heat island effect in Phoenix.